Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we are going to build a simple full stack web app with F Sharp and Giraffe. So in my last post, we built a web API with F Sharp and Giraffe that handles data and returns string representations of that data via its, its endpoints. And in this post, we're gonna evolve those endpoints to return HTML instead, effectively turning our minimal web API into a full stack web app with data endpoints and a front end UI. So first let's start off with an overview of the web app that we're gonna be building. So in this post, we'll be creating a minimal full stack web app with F -sharp and Giraffe. And what this means is the front end is gonna be server side rendered HTML using giraffe.view engine, which is an HTML DSL. The back end is gonna be F -sharp Giraffe on ASP.NET, building off of the web API we built previously. And for data, we're gonna be using an in-memory data repository. The web app itself has three routes and should look very familiar from the previous guides in this series. First, we'll have an index page here with slash, which just shows all items. Then we'll have a slash detail slash ID page, which is gonna show the item with a matching ID that you pass in here as a parameter. And if not, it will return not found. And then slash create, which is gonna allow us to create new items and thus you know, populate this test data model um, to demo. Now, as always, I'm just a random guy on the internet, so you shouldn't just trust the code that I'm gonna show you. And so what I've got here is I have my project open in VS Code and I'm going to run this and demo to you these endpoints to show you that they actually work before we go into code. And so I started this up, it's on localhost 5000. And we're gonna come over here to the browser. This is localhost 5000, let me refresh. And we can see that we have zero items because this is a fresh load and there's nothing in memory here. So what we're gonna do is come over to our create page and we're going to create a few of these. Let's create three of them. And we can see that each time it's gonna say item created and it's gonna show the ID of the new item. So now if we come back over here to our index page, we can see that it's showing all items. And then if we grab one of these IDs and bring it to the detail page, we can put this in the URL here and we can see that it's found and it's giving us the ID back. And then if we give it like a random ID, like I do not exist, then it's gonna say not found because we don't actually have that in memory. So that's a quick demo of the web app and the HTML pages that I'm gonna show you. Very simple, but it should give you an idea of how to build your own. Now in the rest of this post, we're gonna be focusing on how we're rendering our SSR HTML with draft.view engine. So each of these, if we you know inspect this, we can see that this is a valid you know HTML body, um, a very simple one, obviously, but um, this is HTML. Same here, bunch of list items. And so we're really gonna be focusing on that part so you can turn your web API and endpoints into actual you know, SSR rendered HTML. Um, and so if you're interested in deeper dives into other parts of this, like the endpoints themselves, then you should look at this post and the data, how we built an in-memory data repository um, that you could extend to you know, using actual databases. You can look at this post here. Finally, before we get started, you know, if you want access to this project's full source code, um, Hominion's members do get access to this source code on GitHub and my Hamilabs code examples get access to this project as well as um, dozens of other F -sharp projects here. And so if you wanna learn more about that, I check out the Hominions page here. All right, so building server-side rendered front ends with F -sharp and giraffe.view engine. So giraffe.view engine is an HTML DSL. This basically means that it builds up a representation of the HTML using F -sharp native data structures and operations. So things like lists and sequences and stuff like that. And this is useful because it allows you to leverage the power of F -sharp's type system and data operations to build your HTML, which often leads to safer, more dynamic generation. And in my opinion, this is why most people um, like the JS version of uh, HTML generation over a lot of the kind of older, more legacy um, multi-page application frameworks that exist in other languages. And it's really just because the JS system has done a really good job of providing things like JSX um, that gives you better templating that actually has some sorts of types. I um, mean, it allows you to do these data operations on it. And so by having an HTML DSL in you know, your language of choice, this often gives you all the power and kind of ergonomics that you liked from JS land, but you just don't have to use JS. And so for more on draft.view engine, you know, its capabilities and why you might want to use it, you can check out this post, which goes in, into that in a lot more detail. 
Um, here we'll just be touching on the parts that are like most useful to actually getting this simple uh, full stack app up and running. And so the first thing we're gonna do is build a base HTML layout for our site's pages. And now this is a common practice in front end web apps as it allows us to build site pages faster with more consistency and less boilerplate. You know, this allows every page that we um, create, we don't have to redo the boilerplate of like where the style is coming from and you know, what language is this in? What, you know, attributes do this, does this need to be to be in like light or dark mode? Instead, we can share that across all the pages with a minimal boilerplate. And this will also give you an idea of how you might build and use your own templates and components in a web app. Because really when we think about layouts and templating, um, whether it's for the full page or just for like a part of a page, it should follow similar principles. And so here we're gonna use a slots approach to make this layout composable. Slots should be very familiar to you if you're coming from Svelte. Um, or view or react. They basically all use um, or have a concept of slots. And this will make it more useful in more use cases by giving more power to the caller for how they want it to be built. You know, this is the whole argument for composition. It works for building our front end HTML just the same way it, as it works for, you know, layering and composing our logic and backend. Composition is good, you know, wherever you're coding. And so you have this function render with base layout. Um, I like these components to start with like render to show that this is a function. It's building this thing. It's rendering this markup. And then I have the code here, but I'll also show you in my VS code so we can have some code highlighting. Okay, so here we are with render with base layout. And so you can call this and you basically have three slots that we can use. We have the head slot, body slot, and footer slot. And these are all lists. Um, the way that draft.viewengine works is it basically has an XML node to represent each of the you know HTML elements that you can have. And then it uses lists because when you think about it, that's really all HTML is, right? It's just like a bunch of nested lists. And so we're gonna build up our HTML that way. So, you know, at the root, we're gonna have HTML and then we're gonna have a head and we're gonna put some meta stuff in here, but we're gonna allow you to have a head slot. Um, maybe if like a page wants to provide its own things that it wants to import. Um, often if you have like site wide things, you just put it in the base layout so that nobody else has to worry about that. Then we have the body slot, which is probably what most pages are gonna be using and what we'll be using here. This is probably where I put like your divs and your main content and stuff like that. And then often pages want a footer um, for like legal notices, copyright, um, contact us, stuff like that. And so we provide that as well. And so this should be very familiar um, if you have used these other kind of front end frameworks and stuff for how you might build a base layout. And so with the base layout taking care of the HTML boilerplate, we can now move on to rendering each of our pages and really have each of our page renderers just focused on the content for that page as opposed to like, you know, the actual surrounding HTML. All right, so now on to rendering the index page. So the index page, which is slash, um, returns a count and list of all items in our data repository. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in the list of items because we want this to be more purish. Um, it's very good or often just more flexible if you don't have the thing doing the rendering also in charge of the data. And so here we're gonna take a pure approach to this and just pass it the list of items. It's gonna take that list of items to display the count and then display the list of items itself. And I think this is a good example of how using a DSL allows us to leverage F-sharp's list operations to dynamically generate our HTML. And this also happens in a very type safe way. So, you know, let's say you have an option or a result type, you know, you know that something can fail. Um, it prevents you from accidentally just rendering that assuming it's gonna be a success because F-sharp's type system will be like, oh, you didn't handle these cases. And so that's one thing that I really, really like about these DSLs. So let's go to render index page to kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So again, this is like a purish component. Uh, we're gonna pass in all items here, which are simple item list. And we're gonna pull out the count of it. And then we're gonna build the markup itself. And so here we just have a div. And inside of it, we have a header in H3 um, with the string total count that presents the count. And then we're just creating an unordered list. And then we're iterating over our items um, to create a bunch of list items for each item that we have. And then we're yielding that, which basically is just a flatten in F sharp um, so that it comes into this outer list right here. Then finally, we're gonna return this with the render base layout. And this is how we get our full page. Again, the code's here if you wanna reference that. All right, now on to rendering the detail page. So the detail page, which is that slash detail slash ID, um, takes in a single item option. We use option here because there's always the possibility that the ID is bad, and thus there's gonna be no corresponding item in our data model. And it's usually good practice to handle known edge cases. And so basically, if there's no item, then we're just gonna present not found. So it's human readable, they understand why this thing failed. And then if there is an item, then we're gonna display the ID itself. So here's our code. We can see render detail page markup here. We're gonna pass in the item as a single item option. 
and then we're gonna build up the markup here and basically what we have is a div and then based on the item we're gonna match on if it's a none or sum. If it's none, we're gonna print that not found. And if it's sum, then we're gonna pull off the ID here and return it as a string. Then finally, we return this with base layout. Again, the code's here if you wanna reference it. Okay, returning server-side rendered HTML pages to giraffe endpoints. So far, we've built up DSL representations of our HTML pages with F Sharp, but we haven't yet turned them into HTML or returned it to the caller. Here, we'll discuss how we hook up our giraffe endpoints to these HTML components. So first, let's look at how we actually declare our endpoints. And so basically, this is just a list of endpoints that then we're gonna give to giraffe and it's gonna know how to connect um, you know, you hit this URL, I need to go to this handler. And so basically all this is saying is like, if you hit the slash, then we go to get all HTTP handler. If you do the slash details um, with this parameter, then we pull off the parameter and send it to detail HTTP handler. And then if you hit slash create, then we're gonna go to create HTTP handler. For more details on draft endpoints and how to declare them and how to use them and, you know, configure them, stuff like that, I mean, check out this post here for like a minimal version of that and an explanation of, you know, how we built this one and configured it. And for a deeper dive into all the possibilities for endpoint routing, I mean, check out this post. And so the commonality between all these handlers is basically we're gonna be transforming the giraffe.viewengine HTML DSL into an HTML string using this function here, which basically just says we're gonna render this view. We want it to be output as string as opposed to bytes. And then we're going to pass it an HTML node, which is gonna be that um, render with base layout outer HTML XML node that we created. And then what this is gonna do is give us a data type that can be written as a response back. Um, here we're using string. And then we're going to return it via giraffes context at write HTML string async so that it takes the string and it returns it with the appropriate headers so that um, the client understands that this is HTML and it needs to render it as HTML as opposed to just like, you know, a raw string blob. And so we're going to go through our HTTP handlers one by one. So let's start off with create HTTP handler. And basically as a handle context, which gives us a handle to the context, which we need to write this HTML back. And we're going to access our data repo here to create a new item. And then we're gonna create our markup with the render with base layout. We have a header here, which just says that the item was created. And then we're returning the new item with its ID. Finally, what we're doing is we're taking the markup, we're passing it to our render view as string. So we get the string out and then we're going to write it back um, to our context here. Codes here if you wanna reference it. Now let's look at our get all HTTP handler. So here it is, handle context. And basically what we're doing is we're just rendering the markup directly using our render index page that we showed you earlier to build that pure HTML representation. And we're passing into it uh, the get all from our item repo, which gets all items. And then again, we are rendering it to string and then rendering that string out um, to our response. Finally, we have our detail HTTP handler, which basically looks the same. One notable difference is that we're passing in this parameter here, ID, which comes from the request itself, um, really the, the URL. And so we pass that in and then we're handling the context here. We're using that ID to access the item repo to get one, which just fetches it based on matching ID. And then we're just passing whatever is returned. We can see that this is an option here um, to our render detail page markup, which will render this correctly based on whether it's you know none or some. And then it's going to take that XML node, render it to a string, and then finally write it back as a response. Next. So that's a minimal example of how you might build a full stack web app with F Sharp using draft.viewengine to build your server-side rendered HTML. If you wanna build a full stack web app with F Sharp, you might wanna check out CloudSeed, my F Sharp project boilerplate. This gets you up and running with a full stack web app using F Sharp and Draft in about 10 minutes so you can start working on your app and stop fiddling with setup and boilerplate and all sorts of stuff like that. If you like this post, you might also like build a simple F Sharp web API with the data repository, F Sharp and Draft. This goes more into the data repo we used here to actually handle our data to fetch, you know, matching IDs, to fetch all the items, to create new items, stuff like that. If you're into HTMX, you might also be interested in F Sharp Draft with HTMX using Draft.ViewEngine. This is often how I add dynamism to my apps um, these days. And finally, you might be interested in the Hamstack, a simple scalable tech stack for building modern web apps fast and cheap, which is kind of my philosophy around software architectures and how I think most people should build most apps, at least at the start. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.